So you told me a few big names that you got to see when you were just shadowing, but what about some memorable people that you got to work with? Well, uh, I'm going to start off by telling you it's difficult to remember everyone over all right. these years because you end up interacting with a lot of different people. Uh, I can remember uh, clearly I worked with the Chili Peppers a lot okay. in, the, in the early days. Uh, I've worked with the Beach Boys. I've worked with uh, just, uh, shoot. Yeah. Uh, you know, what happens in, in mastering, what I find and what I found is I get to work with a lot of people kind of indirectly. Mm -hmm. And by that I mean uh, I get to work with a lot of producers. The bands aren't always right. available. For instance, recently uh, I, I, worked with Don, I worked with Don Waz quite a bit on different records. Mm -hmm. And he brought me the new Rolling Stones uh, record. So I got to master that. Okay. And that was, you know, like the top of yeah. one, <laughs> one of my checklist uh, on the yeah. career box, you know, uh, because I said, well, Don, why are you bringing this to me? And he's like, because it's right up your alley, you know, mm -hmm. and it was, it was just, it's just a blues record from my period of time when I was a kid and mm -hmm. playing and that was all, it was, it was just what we were doing and what I was into at the time. He goes, I, I know that you'll just nail this. So I got to work with them basically indirectly because I would be cutting refs and acetates and stuff for them. Mm -hmm. And then they would get them and listen and approve or make comments and want changes here and there. Right. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, when, when I did that, I got to, I also got to work with a lot of uh, uh, good producers like Don. Uh, I got to work with, a lot, like the, in the Blue Note catalog, I got to work with a gentleman named Michael Cascuna, who's a, uh, just a genius in the jazz world and mm -hmm. uh, knowing all the different artists. And uh, he introduced me to Horace Silver, who I got to work with. And he was, he's one of my favorite piano players. And uh, I got to, you know, you get to meet different people in, indirectly. I remember one day I was doing a session and Ike Turner just walked in the room and I was like, what are you doing here? And he goes, well, I know this guy. He's a friend of mine. He's an artist, you know. Uh -huh. uh, same when I worked with Shelby Lynn. And uh, these different people can just kind of come in and just yeah. kind of walk around. You know, they just kind of show up at Capitol yeah. every day. There's uh, amazing people that come through that door. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're just never aware of who you're going to be working with. Right. And it can be... Uh, you have, that's, it's a great education. At the time, it's very nerve-wracking, right. but it keeps you on your toes and it makes you get that much better because you have to make sure, you know, like one, one evening I was working nights at the time and the boss came in and said, you gotta stop what you're doing. Uh, Phil Ramone needs some digital edits right now. And he okay. was, he, and <laughs> so and he was doing a, a Barry Manlow, Frank Sinatra record. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so I said, oh, okay. <laughs> so next thing I know, Phil's in the room, and he's a great guy, yeah. an amazing producer, and he has stories. And so he starts telling me all these stories about Paul McCartney and Phil, Paul Simon and all these different people that he's worked with. And, and, so, and then I'm still trying to concentrate and work on, <laughs> on this. And so it's kind of a, it's sort of challenging. But, uh, uh, you know, it just, just the exposure and the people that you're around Bands like Blind Melon would come in, and their day, they they you know, they, in their day, they were pretty, pretty darn popular, and uh, uh, a lot of different. Uh, let's just say, uh, oh, like Jimmy Webb, songwriter, performer. Uh, uh, they've just there's. They, <laughs> I knew I was going to have a hard time with this question because <laughs> a lot of times I've met people indirectly, you know. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, David Cassidy never came in, but I worked with two of his producers, and okay. and so uh, I had the uh, opportunity to uh, kind of I work with these people in a way that they they just hear they know me through my mastering, mm -hmm. and if they like what I want what I'm doing to their music, you know. But uh, you know the the fun stuff is when you're working with guys like the Chili Peppers, and they yeah. just come in the room and start kind of, you know, Flea just starts doing his little Flea thing and yeah. going, doing, doing funny and, uh, and everybody's just breaking up and you're trying to work and just, <laughs> yeah, but you're, yeah. you're, uh, <laughs> you're trying to hold it together, yeah. so to speak, you know. Um, Do you have any more fun stories like that? 
Uh, I do, and well, this goes back to the band days, but mm -hmm. uh, I think I told you earlier, we our band was lucky enough when we opened for the doors right, at the State yeah. Fair. And uh, so um, the show was over, and everybody's packing up. We had our little trailer, and everybody's packing up. And uh, I was ready to get my snare drum kit into the trailer, and Jim Morrison's sitting on it. <laughs> and so I went over to him, and I was kind of being nice. I mean, it's Jim Morrison, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I, I said, uh, "Hey, get off my stuff!" I said, "Could you could you please move?" <laughs> and I'm trying to work. Like, yeah, he goes, "Yeah, sure." No <laughs> and so I do a couple other things, and I go back over there, and he's still sitting there. And I go, "Hey, man, could you?" you yeah. Know, we're trying to get this. Sure, no problem. I'll be right there. And then uh, I can do some more little things. And I look over. Here. He's still over there. So finally, I went and. Uh, I went over to the keyboardist, uh -huh. and I said, I can't get Jim <laughs> off my drum case. He goes, oh, hang on. So he goes over there, and he whispers something in the ear. And next thing I know, Jim Morrison's out of there, but it was <laughs> whatever he did. Oh, you don't know what he said? I don't have no idea what he said. Wow. But it was just a crack up because I couldn't. Weird. He was just hanging he out. He wasn't listening to me. No. <laughs> I wonder what. What he said in his ear. I don't know, but he, uh, <laughs> it got him to move and, yeah. you know. Well, that's funny. But then when we got to, like, to meet the guys in Buffalo Springfield and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and then, or, uh, young Neil Young and, and all this, uh, those were just really fun days. And, and it was fun to kind of bring those back into my days uh, when I came to Capitol because mm -hmm. uh, I was started to meet a lot of these new people. But they were fantastic artists, you know, and and uh, and studio musicians that I just had a ton of respect for. Uh, the, all these players and and you know like Count Basie band would come by, and because and, and I had total respect for that band, but they liked my mastering, so they would come by, and just kind of hang out in the room while I was doing some blue note stuff, uh -huh. and so you know that was like a real thrill because. These guys are just, you know, top of their game. Yeah. But they just wanted to come by. Same with Leland Scar. Scalar, mm. I'm sorry, Leland. <laughs> uh, he's an amazing bass player, but he loves vinyl. And he comes by whenever I'm cutting, and he'll come by and just hang out and, yeah. and just see what kind of records I'm doing. Wow. You know, so it's just... Uh, Is it it's, kind of nerve-wracking just to have people kind of listen, like, over your shoulder while you're trying to work? At first, it, at first it was, and then you kind of, you know, uh, well, you get a little jaded. By that, I just mean you sort of get used to it, mm -hmm. and so you kind of just learn how to deal with both. But it is kind of difficult, especially when people bring a lot of people in. Oh, they have and then a whole it's like, bossy with them. Then, well, then I get upset more than, you know, uh, jaded or, or mm -hmm. just, like, nervous because... Because you're trying to work and yeah, everybody's talking, you're doing your job. and a lot of times they'll be interested maybe in the first couple songs, and then the phones come out, and uh. then people start yakking, and so then I would automatically go to the <laughs> to the monitor and just crank up it. So pretty soon it was so loud they couldn't handle it. So uh -huh. yeah, <laughs> they would leave that's then. That's a good way to get them out of there. Yeah, it's a good way to get them out of there, <laughs> and uh, and I had a smaller room, so that played to my advantage, you know, and then. Uh, Finally, management, uh, they would just say, look, no more than three people. It's mm -hmm. just, it's too much. Yes, yeah. Because most of the time, if it's a new band, they, they all want to come in, you know, right. and it's kind of like, it, I can't work that way because if the drummer says, I want more drums, then you give it to them. And then if then the bass player says, well, now I can't hear my bass as mm -hmm. much. And then you basically end up with what you had in the first <laughs> part, but now it's extremely much later and everybody's got their contribution yeah. you know? and it's uh it's a little bit annoying and and you know you have to charge more for it mm. if you're by yourself you can knock it out because musically you're just in a zone mm -hmm. and you can continue to work and make sure that everything is flowing and flowing good but if uh if everybody else is throwing in their two cents here and there right. it becomes a lot more uh, difficult and it takes up a lot more time right so uh and it, and it breaks your concentration, you know. Oh yeah. Because you're just trying to get a get a good get a good break on it. But uh, but yeah, I've it's it's been I've had a world of experiences mm -hmm. with people that come in 
and uh, they they want to just kind of hear what you're doing, you know. Yeah. But and one and or or just being in the building. Uh, I remember one day I was uh, it was at the end of my day, and I was just kind of cleaning up, and I was by myself, and and I I had the door open, but I, and I heard someone come in, and I looked up, and it was Rod Stewart. <laughs> And I'm like, Rod, hey. what are you doing here? He goes, I'm lost. How do I get out of here? <laughs> and so I was like, here, that'd be my pleasure. Let yeah. me show you. So I walked him personally bit. out, yeah. Yeah, and he was looking all dapper. He was like, I knew he was in, in the, at Capitol. I knew he was doing vocals in yeah. it. But uh, uh, I didn't know he had gotten lost. Yeah. <laughs> but it's an easy building to get lost in. There's a lot of hallways and this and that and this and so it's easy to get turned around um, I've worked with Dean Martin's daughter Dina and uh, so she's been it's fun to work with her because she tells me a lot of stories about her dad oh, yeah. and and he's a big part of Capitol and uh, in those days and when she would come around when she was just a little girl and he'd be you know singing classic tracks so uh, it, you know, in in those areas, you get to kind of reminisce, and and of course, I got to meet Paul McCartney, and I got to meet Ringo Starr. So then, that's the only time when I'm really you're really not jaded. Yeah. You're really not. You know, when yeah. you meet a Beatle, it's like a big deal. So <laughs> a big it's deal. Uh, it, it, it's pretty uplifting to the career, and uh, and just you know, when you see them as just ordinary people. Right. It really it makes you think twice. It's mm -hmm. not like, you know, because I saw the Beatles in, uh, when they played their last gig at uh, Candlestick Park. Mm -hmm. And they went off in the armored car and everything like that. And, and so then fast forward all these years later, and here I am, you know, in the hallway with yeah. Paul, meeting him, shaking his hand. And I'm like, and then Ringo right. about three times because he would always have his birthday party there. And so he would come there and. Uh, they'd have a little thing down in the studio A, and then he'd go out front and play, and he'd have all these great musicians. And Don Waz, being a, he was a producer that I mentioned earlier, but he's also an amazing bass player, so he'd be playing bass with this cool. with Ringo and Jim Keltner, who's a famous studio drummer. And so there's all these guys, and then you look around, and then there's you know Phil Everly, and there, there's just uh, you know uh, <laughs> Joe Walsh, and all these folks are just. Kind of hanging They're out. There. Yeah. <laughs> it's just part of your job, you know. But uh, but it was very was very important to me to make uh, make them feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. 